Today's video is going to be on occlusion and specifically it's going to deal with occlusion and working movements. Uh, this lecture was put together by Dr. Burton L. Ranke and uh, I received permission from him to uh, present this lecture so just want to say thank you to him for putting this together and allowing me to present this to everybody. So the title of this lecture is Learn Occlusion in Five Minutes. So the first thing we'll do is draw two rectangles, two large rectangles. One there and one right here. And this represents your maxillary teeth, you can see here. And then this rectangle is going to represent your mandibular teeth. And then you separate the rectangle according to the teeth here. So you can see we've got a canine here. This is going to be a first premolar. This is going to be a second premolar, a first premolar, a first molar, a second molar. And you can see that the, you know, we drew the squares or the rectangles off to uh, represent the size of the teeth. So the molars are larger than the premolars. And then the canine has the smallest one. All right, and then we're going to add some numbers now. Oh, and then this is lingual, this is buccal. So step two, we're going to add the numbers. These are going to represent your cusps. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, etc. Coming right down here. And this is the maxillary right here. So I drew a box around all of these guys because these represent your lingual cusps. And the lingual cusps will occlude with the mandibular teeth. Uh, these numbers right here, just to be clear, these numbers do not represent the buccal cusps, okay? Uh, this, these numbers just are going to show you how the lingual, or the, the cusps on the lower teeth are interacting with the upper arch. So for now, we're just going to remember that these are the uh, lingual cusps. And it's really important that you remember the order. So draw this out a couple times, kind of get the hang for the pattern of the number, okay, and then it's going to make things really easy for you. And then uh, here's the lower. So just remember, kind of memorize um, the number sequence here. Okay, step three, we're going to draw some arrows, and these are going to represent your uh, excursive movements. So uh, you'll notice that we have different directions for the upper arch compared to the lower arch. So for the upper, we've got a protrusive movement, uh, a working movement, and a non-working movement. And um, there's a note here, don't just memorize this. If you think about it, it makes sense. Stim simulate this with your own teeth. So if you kind of take your lower jaw and do these protrusive or working movements, this does become kind of intuitive. So rather than just kind of memorizing this, um, really think of takes take a couple minutes to think. Intuitive, but definitely um, know the directions here. And then step four, we're going to put it all together. So here we've got uh, an example. I'm going to kind of walk you through how to do this. Okay, so we're going to find the cusp in question. So for example. We're going to focus on the mesiolingual cusp of the maxillary first molar. And you know, in these questions that you'll get on the boards, you have to just kind of take it piecemeal, okay? So start at the largest point of organization. So we're going to go to the maxillary arch. And then which tooth are we going to? We're going to go to the first molar. So let's come here. And then which cusp are we going to do? Mesiolingual cusp. So here we've got the mesiolingual cusp. And then, part two, you'll see part two here, find where the cusp occludes on the opposing arch. So now we're going to kind of see how these numbers correspond with each other. So if we have a seven here for the mesiolingual cusp, and we come down here to the seven, that's going to be the spot where the mesiolingual cusp of the upper first molar occludes on the lower arch. And then you're going to follow the arrow to describe the path of movement. So if it asks for a non-working movement, you can see you'd move down here to the right. If it asks for a, a working movement, we'd move over here to the left. So if this, cusp, if this question was asking um, where this cusp 
what structure this cusp passes through in a working movement, then we'd come here and we'd see it passes through lingual groove. Okay, here's um, a question, practice question. The maxillary first premolar occludes where? So we're going to locate the cusp first of all. So we come up to the, we're on the maxillary, so we come to this right here, and then it's the premolar, first premolar, and then we're going to find the cusp. So step two, find where it occludes in the opposing arch. So we're going to come down here to three. And the answer is it includes on the distal marginal ridge of the mandibular first premolar and the mesial marginal ridge of the mandibular second premolar. So this, you can see how awesome this method is for just kind of figuring out where the teeth are occluding because you get a lot of questions um, about that. So this method is actually very helpful to answer, you know, two types of questions. The ones that are just strictly wanting to know where things are occluding and then um, also it's very powerful when you want to figure out excursive movements. So when you take this method and pair it with the picket fence, you'll be able to answer just about any question that you get on the boards. All right, here's another one. If the mandible moves left, the mesial buccal cusp of the right mandibular first molar may contact what cusp? All right, so the first thing we do is locate the cusp. And so here we're asking about uh, the mesial buccal cusp of the right mandibular first molar. So we come down to the lower arch, find the cusp here at six, and then you find where it occludes in the opposing arch. So here we are. Step three is, uh, is something you really have to pay close attention to here because this is an area that you can kind of get tripped up. You know, this is, Step three comes down to figuring out what the working movement really is. So in this instance, the mandible is making a left working movement, but you have to be careful here because the question is asking about a cusp on the right side. So the cusp is making a non-working movement. And in, in order to figure out, you know, what is working movement, what is non-working movement, I just like to put my hand on my face, just lay my hand flat on my face with my fingers pointing up in the base of my palm at the bottom of my jaw. And so if I take my right hand and I place it on my face and I move my jaw to the right, my, I move my mandible to the right, it's doing work on my palm. It's making my palm move. And so I think of that as a non-working movement. So anything on moving to the right is going to be that working movement. And then there's no work being done on the left side, so that's going to be the, the non-working. And then if I take my left hand and put it on my face with my fingertips pointed up and I move my mandible to the left, it's doing work on my hand, and so that's the working movement. So back to this, we're going to have a non-working movement. And so we come over here and we see which direction we have for the non-working movement. It's going to be up and to the left right there. And so the answer is it will contact the distal buccal surface of the lingual cusp of the maxillary right, the right maxillary second premolar. So let's just kind of break that down a little bit. First of all, it's going to be the lingual cusp of the second premolar, right? And then they might want to know which surface. And so here you can see we're on the distal part of the cusp and then we're on the buccal part of the cusp. Okay, here's a couple more questions. So I'm going to go through this on the next slide, but here's the question. In a right lateral excursion, the mesiolingual cusp of the permanent right maxillary first molar passes where? Now notice the difference between these two questions. It's very subtle, but it totally changes the answer. So you'll see here, I'm asking about the right maxillary first molar, and then down here I'm asking about the left maxillary first molar. So that'll change the working, non-working, excursive type movement. So you have to pay real close attention to that. 
All right, so here we are. In a right lateral excursion, a mesiolingual cusp of the permanent right maxillary first molar passes where? So first thing we want to do is locate the cusp. So we're on the mesiolingual cusp of the first molar on the upper arch. So here we are. Step two, find where it occludes in the opposing arch. So there we are. And then step three is to, to, to determine the movement. So in this instance, the mandible is making a right working movement. And the question is asking about a cusp on the right side. So the cusp is making a working movement. And if you have trouble with that, you know, do the little the hand on your face type of thing. And then you can also use your finger to track which tooth we're talking about. So, you know, if I have my hand up, my right hand up, and then we're talking about a cusp on the left side of the mouth, I'll put my left finger on that cusp to just kind of remember, or on that tooth to kind of track it. And then you follow the arrow. And so in this case, we're going to be doing a working movement. So we're going to pass right through here. So the answer would be it's going to pass between the lingual cusps of the mandibular first molar, or you might see it as passes through the lingual groove of the mandibular first molar. Okay, we're going to do the same kind of question, but we're going to look on the left side. Okay, and so we're on the mesiolingual cusp of the maxillary molar up here, but this time we're on the left side of the mouth. Okay, so we follow the cusp down here, and we're going to determine the working movement. In this instance, the mandible is making a right working movement, and the question is asking about a cusp on the left side. So it's making a non-working movement. So place your right hand up on the right side of your face, and we're doing a right working movement, and so our jaw is displacing our hand. It's doing work on the right side and so that's a right working movement but we've got our left finger on the left side of the mouth and so that's going to remind us that we're focusing on the non-working side so we're going to use the non-working arrow and we're going to come down here in this way and so the answer is going to be the mesiolingual cusp of the lingual of the left maxillary first molar moves through the sulcus between the distal buccal cusp and the distal cusp. So see it's we've got three cusps here remember and so we're gonna pass through the distal buccal and the distal cusp of the lower first molar. And then here we go in a left working movement the mesiobuccal cusp of the right maxillary second molar will pass through which structure? So, if you remember, we only listed the buccal cusps here, okay, or the lingual cusps. But you can kind of pretend where the buccal cusps are by just moving lateral and imagining that that's where the buccal cusp would be. So here we're talking about the mesiobuccal cusp, and we don't have a spot for the mesiobuccal cusp, so we just come to the mesiolingual and we just put this circle here because that's where the cusp would be. And then we find the cusp where it occludes on the, on the lower, so we find the 11 and we just move it out to the side, okay? Because that's where it's going to be. It's going to be kind of hanging over uh, the lower arch. And then we determine the movement. In this case, the mandible is making a left working movement. And the question is asking about a cusp on the right side. So the cusp is making a non-working movement. And if you have trouble with that, you know, do the, the left hand up on the face. We're moving the jaw to the left. It's doing work on my hand. Yet we're talking about the right side of the mouth. So I've got my right finger on that, on that right side and that's the non-working movement, the non-working side, and so we're gonna be moving in this direction. So what are we gonna pass through? It's kind of a trick question, 
We're not going to be passing through anything. Okay, that's the end of the lecture, guys. Just some final thoughts. Uh, this system implies that you have some knowledge of dental anatomy. And then if you memorize the drawing and know how to use it, you'll be able to answer all these types of questions correctly on exams. Study hard. Good luck. Uh, thanks again to Dr. Ranke for allowing me to use this lecture. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, keep studying, guys.